So this is the Iron Horse Iron Spear scenario from the World at War 85 Storming the Gap, Lock and Low Publishing. I'm just coming into turn one here, drawn the first card for the United States. It's this blue <coughs> Fox Armoured Cavalry Regiment, 211th, 2nd of the 11th, that came on <coughs> in the initiative phase just before the start of turn one. And, <coughs> you know, this game just throws up nice um, situations that require some thought and consideration and they seem to be sort of manageable in scope. <clears throat> I'm kind of enjoying it at the moment. And at the mo uh, right now I'm looking at these uh, American troops and thinking, <clears throat> how badly do we actually want to engage these Russians given that <clears throat> our objective is that city over there? <clears throat> What are we trying to do? Because we're not trying to take this city. Um, so what are we trying to do? <clears throat> and I guess what we're trying to do is prevent whatever's here from having an impact on our attempts to take what's over there. So we're trying to perhaps screen a bit. We're trying to establish some sort of control of this open ground here between these two hills and this lane sort of lane up here so that we can get into a position perhaps up on this hill and this hill where we're then l looking at that um, city and um, thinking about taking it. We know that there's a whole load of Soviet T-85 platoons of Soviet T-80s on their way onto the map and you know we'd like to not give them great terrain to sit in but I, that's going to be very difficult given that they come in in turn three but I'd love to maybe rush some stuff around onto this hill perhaps early so that you know the the T-80s are having to come on um, you know, maybe over there or behind this forest, but somewhere cramped where they're not getting lots of the map to to play in. Um, so all those kind of thoughts play into what we're trying to do with our Fox um, Cavalry Regiment here. Um, and whether we want to use off-board artillery <clears throat> at the moment. And we've got one smoke barrage left and three high explosive and I don't see the point in using our last smoke down here when we may very well want to lay smoke across this open ground here to support an advance up against um, the the Soviet forces there. Uh, <clears throat> I don't see um, yeah, much benefit in in using our off-board smoke here. We may drop some smoke down from our on-board um, self-propelled mortar somewhere around here to help screen some moves, but that only lays one smoke counter rather than the three from off-board artillery, but we may try that anyway. Um, and other than that, I think what we want to do is, you know, be in positions just to do some damage to these but if if I could knock off the T62s and a couple of the BMPs such that there wasn't much threat from here anymore without taking any casualties that would be lovely and then and then we'll swing our tanks up and hope to grab this hill before the Russians get on board and you know bring our infantry round up over this way ready for a, some sort of assault in the against the actual um, target of this operation and we're I, I'm going to try not to get bogged down here so that was some thinking about um, the overall shape of the game as as I'm hoping it pans out for us um, and now I've got to get on and do something with these guys um, so what I'm going to do is um, not call in off board artillery and so now we're just on to actions by individual units and I do need to give that some thought. Actually, one of the things I'm going to do, the first thing I'm going to do is take these Bradleys and try and get rid of these T-62s up on this hill here. So um, that is a four dice shot. Um, 
and I'll work out some modifiers and uh, see how it goes. So that's going to be my first action. Then I think we're going to spot for some, we'd use the HQ to spot for some smoke in here from the mortar if we can. And then I'm going to see on what, how, what sort of situation we've got left. So one of the things about this game is you have to take risks. Um, uh, the Americans, Fox ACR, doing the um, doing their um, formation move. The Bradleys have just managed to put a disruption over into one of the T62s, but that was it. That was it. One hit, which didn't get didn't get saved. The HQ spotted for some smoke that came in here to try and um, block lines of sight into this um, Abrams as it moved. Um, the Bradley decided to make a move up around the far side of the hill here that that's disrupted and that left the m1 abrams wondering you know quite how much risk to take in terms of engaging this group and we do want to try and suppress this group we don't just want it all shipping out over here and defending that town so we did have to try and engage it um and <clears throat> it came i think from here uh, joined the Bradleys into the forest back out into here to minimise the shots it was going to take but it's just taken a saga shot from this BMP uh, one down here three dice on fours but it's one two three four five range which is less than half it's 11 rounded down so that's point blank range for or close uh, you know point blank range for a minus one to hit three dice on threes and um, the the Russians have rolled three hits and now that all gets a little bit squeaky for the <laughs> for the Abrams who do have the good armor they do have four dice on fives they're going to get a bonus dice for elevation I think they're going to get a bonus dice for their um, reactive armor no, they get a minus one to their save value for the reactive armor. So they've got four dice on fives. They're going to have um, five dice for the elevation. And they're going to have five dice on fours trying to save against the three hits that have just come in. The HQ can't do anything to help. They can help with attack bonuses and morale saves, but not armor bonuses. So five dice on fours for the um, for the Abrams. And this is fairly, uh, fairly critical, I think, for them. Ooh, that looks like a very good roll. So they've got two sixes and a five there. And they've negated the three hits that have come in um, from the BMP that's a fantastic role for them so few uh, now they can open fire on self same BMP one back here they're going to take a minus one uh, to hit penalty for the uh, move they've just done but that still gives them um, three dice on fives that's three sorry four dice on fives hold on it's point, point blank range so it's five range they've got four dice on fives they've got an hq that puts them up to six dice on fives they've moved so that's six dice on sixes but they are at point blank range which is so they've got six dice with fives to hit overall into this uh, BMP one, and I don't think the um, this agricultural uh, cultivated terrain provides any bonuses to vehicles. No, only to troops. So what did I say? Six dice, fives to hit for the Abrams. Wow. Okay. That's two hits um, for the Abrams. 
two sixes. So now the BMPs have got their work cut out trying to save with their light armour. I keep calling it soft but because it's in this orange box but the S's are soft armour. This five in an orange box is light armour. So they've got a five save. They don't have any um, and they should be ops complete so they don't have concealment either. Um, so they've just got a five and they've failed so they've taken two hits which is a um, disruption and then uh, a step loss and uh, now looking like that and that's the end of the road for the uh, Fox ACR and that's the first formation segment done. Let's just have a quick look at the next card and then I'll move on. We've got a battlefield event. Okay, let's have a look at this then since we've not um, used these before. So battlefield events, I think you roll a D6 um, or two D6. Um, yeah, and then you use this table up here. Uh, so, battlefield event, we roll 2d6. We get something down here. If we roll a 7, we have no battlefield this event, and we roll 2d6 on the friction table instead, which is over here, and we roll 2d6 on that. So let's roll our 2d6 and see what, uh, see what we get. Let's roll a red and a blue dice for the sake of... Five. Okay. Five says cautious approach. Side affected. One side. Your troops exhibit caution as they approach the objective. Activate one friendly formation for a modified formation impulse when actions occur in the impulse sequence. Units of the activated formation may only move or move and fight. Use move. However, they may only use up to half their movement points. To be clear, they may still move and fire. Your units are subject to enemy opportunity fire as usual when movement. I have to read that again, because um, it says one side. How do we know which side this is applying to? I'm gonna have to look at this and uh, see. So here's the answer to my question. If, um, if uh, an event applies to one side, roll a d6, and on a 1 to 3 it's NATO, on a 4 to 6 it's Warsaw Pact. Um, so here we go, and it's a 2, it's NATO, and essentially what this gives us is a free impulse, so we can activate a friendly formation for a modified formation impulse, um, and we can either use uh, move or move and fire actions, um, and we only have up to half our normal movement points, but it's like a free activation. Um, great. So um, I think, given where we're at, we may do Fox Company again. Um, and... Yeah, we can use move or move and fire. No, that wouldn't be ideal for Fox Company actually. Um, but just bringing, just bringing these guys on for a move might be absolutely bloody brilliant for us. So I think we're going to do that. Well, fortune is favouring the brave at the moment. I had a change of heart and decided to um, activate um, Fox Armoured Cav again. And uh, partly because we wanted to try and uh, undisrupt this Jeep, but he failed that role. But we were able to move up, um, move our mortar into a nice safe position surrounded by woods. Um, move our Bradleys forward into good positions for sort of controlling the area over here. And then we brought our um, Abrams round this crest line. He he took another Saga shot from a BMP in here, which 
caused three three hits and he shrugged those off with his um, reactive armor made three saves and then put two hits back into the bmp neither neither of them were saved so the the bmp was disrupted and step reduced and so he is now <coughs> he is now ops complete um so we're making short work of this um russian group so far we've got disruptions 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 i think we've got a disruption in here we haven't caused any step losses but um you know we are we are whittling them down and um we're on to the next card so battlefield event friction has gone and we are now doing all the um the red us okay so this is the um this is the um infantry i don't know what third ad means but um this is the this three infantry platoons with um carriers and some sort of tow missile launchers okay got to think about um what we can do with these end of turn one start of turn two here in this scenario iron horse iron spear um world of war 85 and um this uh russian formation here soviet formation didn't get an activation in the in the first turn so um, their HQ is now on an end of operations card to guarantee them an activation this turn. Um, yeah, and you can see disruption markers throughout there and um, American smoke in here to uh, cover some advances up into this region by American forces as they aim to get out and take the objective over here. Um, American infantry formation is massing in here, trying to get up onto this hill for an attack. Um, the Soviets pushed out from this city with their tanks because the tanks only have range 11 and a Bradley made it into this, um, onto this hill hex here. He was able to make that move because of this smoke. This infantry would have fired a Saga, but the combination of this smoke and this blocking hill hex, two blocking he um, two hex sides. If your if your um, line of sight runs along two blocks hex sides, it's blocked. So if the smoke wasn't here, this infantry would be able to see straight down this hex side into this Bradley and would have taken a Saga shot at him. But with this smoke here. That's now a blocked hex side, and that's a blocked hex side, and two of those blocks lines of sight. So the Americans were quite, um, the Americans were qu were quite cute in dropping some smoke in to prevent some of these units taking anti-tank guided weapons shots. Mm. So we've come into turn two. The um, the only American unit that didn't get two activations with the um, with the three platoons of M1 Abrams, they only got the one, so that's why they're straggling at the back rather than up here, also ready to launch up onto this hill. But the T80s are nowhere in sight. We're only coming into turn two, um, so I've shuffled the deck. I think I've done everything I need to. I've shuffled the deck. I've thinned the smoke. Um, so let's see who's coming up first. And it is, oh, okay. Um, the Soviet, uh, this Soviet defensive force is going to get uh, an action. I don't think they've really got any shots, but I need to check to see what they can do. So finally, this um, <clears throat> Russian formation here has had its card pulled and they are going to put their HQ down on the map somewhere and I've been thinking about this a little bit <clears throat> and what their opportunities are you can see there's lots of disruptions so they're not likely to get that much activity that's really meaningful 
they will probably get a shot <clears throat> with this BMP through along this line um, into the M1 Abrams. So they could drop the HQ down here <clears throat> to give that another couple of dice. That would make it, what range is it? One, two, three, four, five, six. So it wouldn't be, it wouldn't have an extra, <clears throat> it wouldn't have an extra uh, or a minus one to hit for point blank range. But it, they could bump it up to five dice. Alternate on fours, but the other thing they could do is drop the HQ down on these T62s for an extra two dice. And they've got a shot straight across onto this hill here. Range 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, I think. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, which is exactly their range. They could have five dice on fives into this HQ with uh, up over here. Um, and these guys have just got sixes. They've got light armor on sixes and no defensive terrain. And that could be... Uh, that could be very d difficult to defend against. And we don't really fancy the, uh, although this shot up into the M1 Abrams is good, the M1 Abrams um, four dice on fives, they'd have a bonus for anti-tank guided weapons because of the reacted up. React In fact, they'd, they'd be on four dice on fours because of the reacted armor, bonus dice for um, for the elevation, they'd have five dice on fours and the Abrams tend to shrug off hits a bit too easily. And we think we might have a better chance if we can kick that HQ out of crippling this um, this whole formation, maybe. So we're going to give that a try. We'll drop our, drop our HQ down on the T-62s. Now I'm going to make some rolls for um, losing the disruptions and then some missile um, reloads before we get into this shot. Okay, well something that's quite interesting is that missile reloads comes before disruption removal and um, that's the little wrinkle. So you can't undisrupt and then reload missiles because the one step comes before. So even though these guys were able to lose their disruption and though the, they were the only unit that did they couldn't then reload um, but we then took this shot over here five dice on fives with the t62s straight over into the hq i got a rather nice roll that's two sixes and a five so that's three hits um, for the uh, russians and the Americans over here have got only one save, I think, because they've got the these Bradleys. I think we, I called them glass cannons. They are a little bit. They've got a light armor, so a save on a six. Um, he's not got any bonuses for. Um, not got any bonuses for anything he hasn't got an elevation advantage because this guy's on a hill he's not in any sort of defensive terrain like woods or buildings um nothing so he's not got concealment because he's not in any sort of defensive terrain so nothing so he's got one die and he needs a six uh, for one save and he gets a two and that's three hits on that bradley and that just vapes the bradley um, straight off the board and I think then I need to check what's just happened to the um, I need to check what's just happened to the HQ because I think it's just been uh, reduced and going into the suppression box um, let me just have a look at that yeah just as I thought the HQ is now suppressed and reduced. That means it'll be us using its reduced um, stats um, when its card comes up. It won't be available for the rest of this turn. And obviously they've lost the Bradleys as well. And we've got Rex in this hex. Um, this Bradley is a recon unit, so they're always in command. But that's going to cause command issues for um, the other... Uh, units and that was a really significant shot for the Soviets um, 
So, um, what else are we doing? We've got other stuff that we can do down here. I think um, we're going to drop down. I think this BMP um, one is going to open fire on the M1 Abrams up here. We've got um, three dice needing fours. As we've worked out, we've got no modifiers, so um, we're just going to go for it. Three dice needing fours, and that's two hits. They've got the two fours there, and the um, Abrams have got four dice, five dice needing fours. So relying on your armor forever that's one that's one save so they've taken one hit which puts a disrupted on the m1 abrams okay so we'll roll um uh, ammo depletion on the bmp one and he's got an eight and he is missile reloading Um, but now what we can do is drop our saggers onto this infantry here. Now I want to also put a, uh, some Ops Complete Markers down on these guys. Those guys are disrupted so it doesn't matter. Okay. Um, we can drop some saggers down on here and they can take a shot. One, two, three, four, and this is at point blank range. So they've got three dice on threes. Um, and that's another two hits. And the Americans have again have got um, five dice on fours. To try and shrug off two hits. <laughs> right. And yeah, when your luck runs out, your luck really does run out. That's three, four ones and a three. And that is two hits on the Abrams here. And they have just bought the farm. Uh, okay. Um, this is... It was all looking quite good for the Americans and it's all just gone very badly wrong very quickly. Um, so yeah, you can you can take some chances but yeah, only for so long. Let's just run some ammo depletion on these infantry and see what happens there. And they've got a four and they do not get a missile reloading and they are uh, just ops complete and now we've got to think about what to do with the rest of these and part of me thinks we ought to be trying to swing round um, to help in the defence of the city over there and fall back and I'm wondering whether it's worth trying to get into the BMPs or not given that this one's disrupted, this one's disrupted, this one's ops complete and I don't think it is, I think maybe we're better off just walking the infantry back there and seeing what they can seeing what annoyances they can get up to on the way even if it's just soaking up shots and being generally a pain in the ass um so i'm going to do that now and see what moves they've got and of course we've got to worry about you know what what we're going to use as an hq to keep everything in command but we'll worry about that we'll just sort of scamper them back um somewhere that looks more useful than where they are.
Well, we just hit the end of turn two here in um, Iron Horse, Iron Spear. Disastrous turn for the Americans. The end operations card has just come out. And if we look at what's left in the deck, we've got both blue Fox cards and both red um, A163. So the, their infantry units didn't get a turn. Fox got decimated, had a platoon of Bradleys and a platoon of M1s wiped out. Their three platoons of Abrams attempted to take up positions overlooking the objective city. And um, this one uh, got a shot away but didn't hit anything. This one was stopped by um, anti-tank fire, um, defensive fire from some T-55s and was disrupted to actually saved against, I think, two hits and saved them both. This one was hit by um, it was, it was infantry armed with saggers with an HQ and put three hits into it and saved two of them and was disrupted. So it was precarious stuff there for the Americans. They've got into firing positions, but they need to get rid of those disruptions and they need a lot more activity than they got this turn. So this is all looking pretty difficult for them. That was a pretty fairly disastrous turn. For the Americans, I don't think I've done a lot wrong with them, but they did get diced on a couple of um, horrible attacks, which especially the one that wiped out the Abrams, although the one that wiped out the Bradleys was pretty bad as well. Um, they're going to have two of their cards now pulled with... Um, I say HQs put on them, but one of their HQs is disrupted, although it will go back into the deployment box as part of the wrap-up. So, yeah, not good. Anyway, I'm going to um, finish this here and move on to another another video for turn three.